Now, in Nords and Crosses, this is fairly straightforward. You've only got nine spaces, so you, you can just type it out and have them all start free. What if you've got chess and you're trying to make an 8x8 eight eight board? Well, you'd have to create 64 of these, or you're playing Go and you've got like a 19 by 19 board. That's going to take ages. So it's best to get into, into the common practice of doing four loops. And even though it is just a, a nine grid game, what we'd rather do is we'd rather instead make it so that we can have a for loop just so we can get used to it and so that it's easier and it takes up less space. And it's just it's just a common practice. So this time, well, we have the for loop. We have, I start with at one, semicolon. I, if it's less than or equal to three, and i plus equals 1 every time. And then we have whatever happens in the brackets. Now we should be used to this by now, this idea that something repeats three times. But this time, we don't just have the one variable. We have the second variable, the second dimension in the array. So, what we're going to do now is within the for loop, we're going to create another for loop, which is J. Yo dog, I heard you like for loops, so we put a for loop in your for loop. Indeed. So, here we have a for loop within a for loop, and we need to do open and close brackets. Just tidy it up a bit here. Open and close brackets. I'm just tidying it up there. Open and close brackets for the J. Now, what is this saying? It's saying that for every I, we are going to run this for loop. And the, that for loop is J. So now we want to declare the variable. Variable grid. And this time, the values we're putting in are I, comma, J space equals and then just the empty string like that so also you got to make sure that you've got the right amount of open brackets and close brackets there first of all let's spar this right or it's var grid let's think about what this actually means uh well it means within the for loop we have j equals one if it's less than or equal to three and then add one to it so that's going to happen for every value of i. So we start at i equals 1. It will, yes, i is less than or equal to 3. So then what we'll do is then we'll run this for loop. And we'll go j equals 1, j is less or equal to 3. And therefore, the grid i j, which is 1, 1, equals a blank space. Now that we've finished with j, we can add 1 to it. So now j is still less than 3, less than or equal to 3, because it's 2. And then we can now say a very grid 1, 2 equals a blank space. So then it goes to 3, and then it says, yes, j is less than or equal to 3. So now we can have very grid 1, 3 equals blank space. And then it'll add 1 to it, and it'll say, now j will be 4. And it'll be like, hang on a second. J is still is no longer within the scope of being less than or equal to 3. So what do we have to do now? Well, what this means is now that's ended. So what that therefore means is the first, the first round of this outer loop has ended. So now it's gone, OK, that for loop's done everything. Now we're going to make I equal to 2. That's still within the boundaries of being less than or equal to 3. And then... Then it'll go through this again. Okay, j is equal to 1. j is less than or equal to 3. So we'll have 2, 1 equals blank. Now we'll add 1 to j. And it'll do this for, basically, it'll go 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and then 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. And then once 3, 3 is done, it'll go back to i and it'll say i over 4, and it won't run this out loop anymore. So the whole thing will then end.